Hi everyone and welcome to my video today where I want to talk to you about one of my most recent purchases of a big type of equipment which is the DeWalt DWS 780 and this is an awesome compound miter saw. When I was looking at miter saws a couple years ago, well actually it's more than a couple years ago, I asked you know, I did my research and I asked my coworkers, what do you think? I was deciding between two miter saws and our lead tech at the time, I work in a different industry, but he was our lead tech. And he said, go with the DeWalt. He said, hands down, it is going to be the best option out of them both. So I did go ahead and buy the DeWalt 780. And at the time it had a promo of coming with the saw stand. And I'm going to also review the saw stand. I just put that together and I, have watched so many YouTube videos and gotten so much great information from various YouTubers from novice to experience. I fall more in the novice to intermediate range. I'm not quite intermediate, but I'm not a total beginner either. So please be aware that what I tell you is what I have researched, what I have gathered from other YouTubers, and I am starting out with this. And my first very positive impression of this miter saw and what really let me know that I made the right decision was that the LED lighting system is not a laser and the laser may tend to go off calibration from the exact center. And I have found that on one of my jigsaws. I don't really use the laser because the calibration is off and I never research calibrating the laser because I'm fine without it. But on this one, I am really happy that there is an LED light which will not go out of calibration. And that LED light is perfect because it casts a shadow on both sides of that saw blade so that what you see is what you get as far as where you are going to cut. So you can really align those teeth just to the side of your cutting line so you get perfect cuts worth its weight in gold. Another thing that I have to point out, and I'm really kicking myself regarding this, is when I took it out of the box and I set it on the saw stand, I noticed that I took my level and I put it across the flat area where the fences are, and that was level. The table itself is not level, the turning table for the miters. And I've read a lot of things in reviews and comments on YouTube videos, and a lot of people mention sanding down the surface. That is something that at some point in time I might do, but I read a comment where somebody said he did the cheater's method and he just used painter tape to shim up that area. But today I am waiting for my little square angle calculator to test the blade to make sure it is 90 degrees square. And I will check all the miters with sample cuts that I'm doing as well. I'm going to check the bevels at a later time. I don't need to do that today because I have a project that I'm working on right now but making sure that your blade is calibrated is going to be very important and that's what I am working on today. I did get this angle calculator as a digital reader to calculate the angles and I just feel that I'm not getting the best calculations on here. Sometimes I'm getting a perfect 90 degrees but because this is a little awkward and putting it on the side of the blade I did order one of those square smaller ones that are magnetic and it will, I can just put it right on the blade and check the angle to make sure I'm working with 90 degrees and then I will check all of the miters themselves separately as well. As always, safety is paramount, so make sure you have safety glasses, dust mask for your face, and ear protection going to be very, very important. I saw in one YouTube video, this was measuring around 94 decibels. That's right in the danger zone at the beginning of it for hearing damage. So make sure that you take the necessary safety precautions. And if you have longer hair like me, make sure that you tie it back. That's why I'm wearing my hair tie to make sure I can get that out of the way so nothing comes in contact potentially with that blade. Right now I'm going to focus on the saw stand itself. I really like this stand. I find it's very durable, very easy to put together. I took it out of the box. I did watch a video just to see the overall you know, parts going together, super, super easy. There are a couple caveats that I want to let you know. And there's one tip that I thought was very useful that I only saw in one YouTube video that I didn't find in any other one. So this is not my discovery. It was someone else's, but it was extremely helpful. So let's focus in on the table saw stand right now.
So here is my saw stand set up with my saw. Now this is not where it's going to be located. It's only located right here for videos because I got other stuff in the way. But right here, this is the stand itself. These legs will retract. There's a little lever here and there is a handle under here. So it just seems kind of odd that the handle's on the underneath, but here it is. But what you're gonna do when you want to remove this from the saw stand, you do have handles in the back. There's a front lever you have to push first. So you push in the front lever and then you squeeze up on the trigger and you do it on both sides. One of the things that I didn't think about when I got this is that this is 56 pounds. It is almost half my body weight. So this kind of complicates it for me. I really need my husband to help me uh, put this on and take it off the saw stand because I it's just too bulky. I cannot do it myself. I don't feel like I have the best leverage in getting it on here. But the actual putting it on and taking it off is very easy. And at some point in time, I'm going to build a rolling miter saw stand because I think that's going to be paramount. This table saw stand, it comes with two extra accessories that you're going to attach at the end. So right here, you can loosen this pin right here. And these side extensions, you could lock them into place. This will unlock it. You can bring it out. And you can bring these out really far. I think you can get over approximately 100 inches of wood that you can lay on here. And this can be used as like a stop. It can be used to support your, your wood. But the problem with this is when you fold these legs in and you turn the saw stand over on the side, you're gonna be holding this up here and this is going to be on the underside. So unless you take these off, you really wouldn't, in my opinion, want your stand to be supported by this on the ground. It's gonna scratch it up too. And also someone made the comment that this lever, that if you set your saw stand down and these are off, these plastic levers are going to be supporting your saw stand. These are hard plastic, they're pretty strong. But you know, if you slam this down on the ground just the right way, these are probably going to snap and break. One great YouTuber said that if you unscrew this, he what he did was he changed the angle and then reinstalled it so that it would be like this way and this way or something like that. So it would not be in contact with the ground when it was folded up. I thought that was a really great tip but these you are gonna have to take off or else they're just gonna get scratched up. But overall, I think it's a very sturdy sand, very easy to use, just a couple minor things that I personally would have changed and a couple other people made those comments as well. Here's a close up of my miter saw. And when I got it set up, I took my level to make sure everything was straight across. This side over here and this side are level. I was a little disappointed. You see that I have tape right here. And the reason why there's tape here is because I found that this area is level, but this area slopes down a little bit. Now the table itself, I read that some people commented that this is lower than the sides here next to the fence. And someone said that DeWalt designs it that way. They contacted DeWalt about this. So I'm not sure what that is about. Um, I guess it's supposed to be a little lower, but don't take what I'm saying as truth. This is just something I read. But I am going to be experimenting with some tape to kind of bring this up so at least this area is level. Not a game changer, but if you test this out at home, I would take your level and if you find that you're having an issue like this, take it back. I shouldn't have to deal with this. But again, I waited so long to open up the box that I am out of the warranty period, I'm out of the return period. So I just have to make do with what I have. And when I got it, it was very easy enough to take it out of the box. You're going to get your saw in your downward position. Your miter is probably going to be pushed over to the right. So I just used my lever right here and adjusted that. And let me just move up just a little bit because this was something that right here, this little knob right here, took me about two minutes to find this and figure this out. You got to push the handle down a little bit, pull it out, and then the blade will go up. Another thing is I'm going to be using an extension cord with this. Make sure you have the right gauge extension cord. I'm not using anything longer than 25 feet. I don't want a loss of power, but just make sure you match that to the voltage in your house. I think that's pretty important. I'm happy to report that this just came 
and was delivered to me today. So this is gonna be used to calibrate my blade, but first I am going to do some test cuts just to see how it's cutting, see how it's working because I haven't plugged this in at all. I currently have one of my boards that I need to cut clamped to my surface and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the cut line and I wanna show you this, to me it's a selling point feature of this saw. I'm going to bring the saw blade down and you can, as you get closer, you can see the projection of the shadow of the blade right on your work surface. And you could really adjust exactly where you want that to be. You will actually be able to see the carbide tips of the blade on that line. And you wanna make sure those tips are to the right of the line because what's to the left over here is what I need to cut and what's on the right, that's the waste. I couldn't cut this better myself.